back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back. Welcome back. Today we have a special guest, a special, very special guest with us. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Kimberly Cameron. I go to the Church of God of Prophecy located in Brooklyn, New York in Crown Heights. Um, in addition to that, I am also a licensed clinical social worker currently working at a large hospital as the assistant director of social work. And in addition to that, I have spent um, at least the last 15 years working both in ministry and in my career with young people, working with youth, youth who have medical and both uh, behavioral or mental health issues. Okay. What support can um, a friend or somebody offer to somebody that has depression? Excellent question. I would say, especially now, like we're going through the whole COVID-19 and I feel like people are even more so isolated. I think the best thing that a friend can do is to stay present, is to check on that person. So if you're suspecting that someone might be going through something, you're not maybe not even sure if it's depression, but you know that something's wrong, stay present, text that one. But a lot can be hidden by a text message. So I would say we're in an um, age of technology. Um, make sure you see that person. So either whether you're showing up on their door, whether you're inviting them out, or whether you're sending a video message so that you can actually see how they're doing in a way that they can't hide, I will say to stay present. Don't, don't allow that person to isolate. Amen. <laughs> Question nine, what are some treatment options for teen depression? So treatment options are psychotherapy, which I believe I mentioned earlier, uh, medication management, or some combination of both. So I am also a Christian, so I can't go without um, being able to pray or call upon a group of people. You don't need the whole church to know your business, but if there's a small circle who can pray, who can be that person to um, be your confidant, not necessarily a therapist, but a mentor that maybe you can just speak real to and who at the end of that can also pray with you. There is nothing like the presence of God. And although I'm, I'm a clinician and I strongly advocate for, for talk therapy and you might need that to get yourself to a point where you can get back praying, but there is nothing like the presence of God. Amen. What a great response. Number 10, what do I need to tell my doctor? When do you need to tell your doctor? That is a good question. And it's, and it's twofold. It's when do you need to tell your doctor and then what you should be telling your doctor, right? So I would say if you're really feeling like, so definitely if any thoughts of suicide comes into it, because we just talked about depression, but we didn't necessarily talk about depression that can lead to suicidal thinking. So if you're at that point, you definitely should be discussing with a doctor um, first or any type of counselor. You also should be discussing with, with your doctor if you're also experiencing physical pain, um, weight loss, or it, or it has been going along for a long period of time. One of the things that gets confusing for teens is that we, they're, clinically there's something called major depression disorder which comes with either several depressive episodes, but it's indicated by at least two weeks of a serious depressive episode. However, teens also experience something called dysthymia, which is a more low grade depression that can last for about a year. And oftentimes teens are functioning with this and they don't really know when it crosses over to a more serious depression. So I would say if, some, if, if you're losing weight, if your sleep is disrupted, if your grades are disrupted, and in combination with any type of suicidal thinking, whether passive or overt, meaning you actually have a plan, you thought about it, sometimes you stay up at night and you're researching, if I mix this with this, what will happen? You should see a doctor. Amen. And a lot of stuff that you just said, Sister Kim, I did not know. I was surprised. So I'm learning while y'all learning too. <laughs> Question number 11. Does someone have to be on medication forever? Not necessarily. Um, it really depends and it should be something that's, that's discussed 
in coordination with your doctor. Just like any other medical illness, sometimes some things are chronic and you do need them for a long time. Um, that can be the case with, with depression. Oftentimes, most people don't want to be on it. A lot of times due to stigma or feeling like I want to be able to manage this without medication. But for other chronic medical illnesses, although we may want that, that may not be possible. Um, one of the things what you should sharing with your doctor is what's your goal, right? I, I want to be able to manage this depression and somehow be able to function. And what will happen between you and the doctor, if you're doing well for a certain period of time, there can be a trial of maybe lowering the dose, but not removing it completely. Oftentimes people think, well, I'm doing better, so I don't need the meds. When in fact, you're probably doing better because you're on the meds or you're also in therapy and doing the work to feel better. Uh, so no, not necessarily for the rest of your life, but again, it depends on the severity. The last question, is depression a life sentence? So when you say life sentence, are mm. you meaning like once depressed, you're depressed forever? I mean, I mean in like you're going to be depressed forever, like this is never going to end. You're going to yeah, be on so your life. No. So like anything, um, if, if um, you think of a medical illness, even with cancer, people have cancer and then they go into remission and they don't have it anymore. So the same can apply with depression. You can have um, a major depressive episode or major depressive disorder. And the same way you can look at it as in remission, recurrent, meaning it kind of comes and goes. You might have months of a good time and then you may have another like episode or your medical record could read Kimberly Cameron history of depression and it's not necessarily a problem anymore so it's not lifelong however it is a condition that needs close monitoring that even when you're doing better you need to be aware of that you have risk factors of this I will say that once you have depression the risk factor is that you once had it, right? So the same way if you're around parents and environment um, is a risk factor, just the fact that you've had it before now puts you at risk to experience it again if you don't have the proper coping skills to maintain and manage it. Amen. And this is the very last question. Is there anything that you want the viewers to be known about depression that we did not discuss? Let me see. Um, I think there's just so much stigma around depression and it's actually a really common thing, more common than people would like to admit. And there is hope for depression. There are people with really severe symptoms where that feels lifelong because it is longer period of time to get out. But for most people, it is manageable. It is treatable. And even just more so from a, a Christian perspective, even Christians might need medication for depression. Um, and I think sometimes people feel like that's difficult to hear or to ma manage, but we need medications for other stuff too, right? So if my house is on fire, I'm not just going to sit there and pray and not call the fire department, right? So, so it is with any other illness. So it is with mental health. We're going to do the things and seek out the people we can, as well as get spiritual wise, um, wise counseling, right? As well as call on the elders. So the same way we call on the elders to pray for a physical condition, we can do that for a mental condition, but you also have to seek help with it. So I did want to drive that home because I do see within the Christian community, this is something that's more taboo. And it makes it that when people go through it, it's, it's either more secretive, or they have great difficulty because they feel like, well, I'm a Christian, I shouldn't go through this. But we are not immune as Christians. We go through everything else as the world goes through. We suffer the same way. Um, the difference is we already are assured that we're going to come out victorious. We know that. Question. So say somebody's going through depression now and they don't have somebody that they trust, who can they go to? So then they can seek counsel. You can find a counselor um, who is skilled to go through that, where it is a safe place 
um, who you can talk about these things with. Maybe you're not comfortable talking about it with a friend or a family member. Maybe you're embarrassed. And usually, oftentimes, that's something that's easier to say to somebody you don't know. Me out, guys. If you can't trust nobody, seek professional help. This is the end of the video, guys. Just thank you so much for coming back. If you haven't liked the video already, like it. If you're new, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. And this is motivation for young Christians. I'm out.